So I was so grateful for you to share um, a little bit about your family. Um, they sound like wonderful people. What do you want people to know about Steve? And people won't hear my questions, so if you don't mind telling me how many kids you have and where Steve falls in that, and then tell me a little bit about him. I only have the one. Steve's my only child. And uh, he's, uh, he's he's just special. He was he's very kind, loving, uh, concerned with his parents. He's just he's here every day. He checks on us every day. And uh, if I have to go to the doctor, he doesn't want me to drive by myself. I have to go to Jonesboro, so he doesn't want me to drive by myself. He's over here to take me and. His wife just as she's just as sweet as he is, though she's she's just as thoughtful. And my grandkids are too. They're just they're just special people. And it's it's the hardest thing that ever had happened to me. It's just it's just devastating. It's just. But I know he's safe now. I know he's not hurting, and I know my grandson's safe, and and uh, I'm just gonna go be with him someday. <laughs> That's just. <laughs> but uh, they're just they're special. My ki my grandkids both loving, good kids, and and uh, I think I think they think I'm special too. So <laughs> we're just. I just don't know how, how we're going to make it. It's, I know we have to. I don't know other people have been through this, but when it happens to you, it's it, it you understand what people are going through, all of these tragedies and and you know, I pray for those people, but I didn't really understand what it was like until this happened to me. But we're gonna get through it. I'm there. We're going to be there for our, our granddaughter and our daughter-in-law, and, and we're going to get through it together somehow. Tell me about Steve as a father. Steve's father is... <laughs> or Steve as a father. Their relationship, you want to know about them? How, how... Uh, no, if you would describe your son as a father to his own kids. Oh, the, the father to his kids. Yes. How much he loved them. He loved them so much. He was, he loved both of them, but that little girl has him wrapped around her finger. I mean, he's just, but he was close to, to Lance too. I mean, they were, and they did everything together. They, he'd take them to, you know, the movies or, or to the water park or whatever they wanted to do and, and Pam was the same way and they just, uh, very close, very close. They did everything together and uh, this vacation was just a little, just a little outing for them before school started and, and, but, and you can tell by looking at their pictures. They, you tell they're happy. They were happy. I mean, it was always smiles and, and, and you know, my, my sister told me, she said, Steve couldn't have lived if he had gotten out and, and Lance didn't. She said, he couldn't have lived. He wouldn't have made it. He was just, that way, and he, he just couldn't have, I don't know what would have happened, but I don't think he could have made it. And and I want to think that Steve was probably trying to help some other people out. He was trying to, to get somebody out, or some children or something, because that's just the kind of person he was. He wanted to, he always helped. He, he was always helping somebody, almost, he was generous almost to a fault. He was just, Anybody that came by that needed something, you know, Steve would do it or help 
any way he could. He was usually the first one at church. He opened up the building and he was he did whatever they wanted. He, he he led singing or he led prayer or if they had a job to be done, if somebody needed to move, they'd say, "Steve, can you help me move?" And it was you know you could depend on him. He was he was that kind of person. What do you want people to know about Lance? He was 15, to be 15, he was still so loving, just like he was when he was a little boy. He came in this house, he always hugged me, and hi, Nana, how are you? And when he'd leave, it was always hug us, and I love you. And Steve did the same thing, though. He didn't leave this house without saying, I love you, Mom, I love you, Dad. And, and that's the kind of boy he was, and he has lots of friends. And I think, I think they could tell you the same thing, that, that uh, Lance is special. And he never blamed anybody. When he got his a boy tackled him, and they were playing football, and, and he broke his leg, had a bad, a bad break. And he said, but it wasn't his fault. He said, it was my fault. I brought my football to school. It was my fault. So that's the kind of person he was. And just, And she's like that too, but she's she's not quite Lauren. It's not quite as open with hers. Lance was more more loving toward you. But I mean, she loves you, but she's not as she's kind of shy a little bit. She's she's not quite. But then she showed after this accident. She showed that she's just as loving as he was. She she did amazing things. Lance and Lauren, a close relationship? Yes, yes, very close. I mean, they were brother and sister and they had their arguments and all, but it was, mm -mm. they woke up when they were little. I, I went over and babysat so that they didn't have to get them out of the house. And I would go and peek in, they were in the same bedroom then, he was in a little twin bed and she was in a crib. And, and I'd go in and watch them to see when they were waking up, and they'd wake up and look over. One would look over at the other, the other would wake up and look over, and they were just laying there smiling at each other. And they, that's what they've always been. They were just, they're just 13 months apart, so you can imagine they're just very, very close. I just want to check on the grandfather clock. Um, oh, is it about to? Because I know it's going to chime. How close are we? Reach, a open, to a and a half. Okay. okay, open that door and just stop the pendulum. Just hold it and it'll stop. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are we good? We're good. Great. Now, some of this you can cut out, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about the trip. Um, your daughter-in-law um, stayed. Can you just give us a little accounting? Uh, Pam stayed and the rest of the family went on the boat. Is that correct? She's not, she doesn't swim and she's not a water person. I mean, she takes the kids, but she doesn't go in. So she didn't want to get on that boat. So he dropped her off at the mall at the Landing, I believe it's called, and uh, he took the kids and and went on the duck ride and and the skies was clear, were clear. She said when they started, but of course this came up suddenly and and uh, I think they'd had a report about 30 minutes before, but nobody told anyone. I guess I read, they didn't get the word. I don't know what happened. It was it was uh, it was sudden, but. No, she went shopping and and, uh, and she, uh, he was supposed to come back and pick her up at a certain time and so she waited and, and she said, I was kind of wandering around and waiting and finally she called him and she said, uh, he said, Pam, it's bad. It's, it's really bad. And uh, she said, I told him I loved him. And, he told me he loved me, and I said, uh, tell the kids I love them. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if the 
lost service or you know what happened, but it was that's the last thing she said she heard and uh, and then she didn't uh, know anything still until a policeman came and found her. But Lauren had uh, come to it. She was at the hospital, and, and she described her mother and told them where she was. And this policeman went, and he found her and brought her to the hospital. And so that's when she knew what had happened. And, uh, and then uh, Lauren told me that kids were screaming on the boat and trying to find their parents, screaming for their parents. And she said, I, I guess it started tilting, the boat did. And she said, I looked over at Bubba, she called him Bubba, and said, I love you, Bubba. He said, I love you too. But she said, I couldn't find my daddy. And, and, um, he, uh, and then she said the next thing she remembered was trying to get out. And, and she, she said, I, I wasn't strong enough. I couldn't pull myself out. And a man tried to pull her out, but he couldn't. And then she said, and then another man came. And she said, my lungs were burning. And, and she said, I just, uh, uh, but that man jerked her out. He said, she just, he just jerked me out. And she went to the top. And, and she said, I felt hair. She said, I thought it was hair on my arm. And she said, I looked down, and it was a child. And she didn't remember whether it was a boy or a girl. She said it was a little child, and she said the child was sinking. And she said, I just dove under and got under the child and pushed him up and held him, held him up and talked to him, let him float until someone from this boat uh, that was, I think, called the Memphis, uh, the Branson Bell, maybe. Anyway, and they pulled them out and when they did and somehow I don't know if it's when they kind of threw her up to someone there she hit her head and she had a concussion but she spent the night in the hospital and then in the next evening I think they dismissed her and said you know she was going to be okay but uh, she felt really bad because she said I saw children all around me in the water screaming and she said I wanted to help them the waves were so high that she said it kept pushing me away and she said I wanted to go back and help them but they pulled her out so I said and I said Lauren how did you do that how did you know to, I mean how did you do it she said well I just thought it was the thing to do it was the right thing to do I needed to help that child and that's kind of the way I want people to remember her and Lance too is they were caring and loving and they helped other people uh, before they helped themselves even. You know, she was more concerned with that child than she was her own safety because she could have, she's a good swimmer and she could probably have made it to that boat maybe, but she stopped and helped that child. So, and I told her, I'm just so proud of you and you're so brave. And she said, but Nana, I was scared. <laughs> I said, but you did the right thing. You did what you had to do, even though you were scared. And uh, so, uh, and I just want everybody to know how well they were treated at Brent's. The people there were just wonderful. The police department, the nurses, the doctors, everybody, the people at the hotel where they stayed were just, just wonderful. They even brought flowers, and, I mean, even I think gifts. They, he said that the employees all wanted to do something, and and the Red Cross. They, I think, put all the families up in a room for two or three nights. And uh, Lauren lost her glasses. She she wears glasses, and one of the nurses. I don't know how she knew, but she said, "Lauren, I understand you've lost your glasses." And she said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "Where?" do you have your eyes checked? Who does this? And Lauren told her. The nurse called the doctor and they sent the prescription and she came in with a new pair of glasses and she paid for them. She would not accept any money. And uh, 
Lauren said, she showed them to me, and she said, but it says Ralph Lauren on here. Nana, I don't know what that means. And I said, honey, it means they're expensive. <laughs> and that nurse didn't have to do that. Another nurse just went out and bought her Chinese because she wouldn't eat. And she said, what do you like? And, and Lauren says, and how much do I owe you? And she said, you don't owe me anything. And the, one of the doctors, or maybe more than one, I don't know, they had Build-A-Bears for all those children. She had a Build-A-Bear she brought home. Uh, another nurse, pay, Steve had the keys in his pocket, and, and of course they didn't have any way to get the car. And uh, a nurse said, my father owns the Ford dealership here, and if, it's, if we have your permission, we'll come and, he'll come and get this car. He took it, and they made a new key fob, and brought it back to the hospital. And she said, "She said, uh, and don't try to pay me. Don't try to pay us. We're not. We won't accept it." And I said, "Those people were just, just the kindest, best people, and I, I just appreciate them so much. I just can't thank them enough for what they did for my family." And people have been so kind all over the country. I said, I can't believe the, the emails, the text messages from places as far as, as away as California, Florida, Michigan, even out of the country. People have sent messages and support, prayers, and even want to make donations to something. And, and we're, our minister is setting up a a scholarship and it'll be Steve and Lance Smith, edu some kind of educational scholarship at Freed Hardman University in Tennessee and it'll be for a, something that'll have their, you know, and I, I like that. I like that better than just flowers or, because that's going to be a memory that, I mean, it's going to be something to last, and people will remember. Uh, and the soccer team here, the Osceola Parks and Recreation, they told us that they were going to uh, dedicate the soccer, this soccer season, to Lance. He used to play soccer. And uh, I thought that was just a kind gesture, too. And I think that's because, that's the kind of people they were and, and everybody loved them and they, they know what they were like. So Earlier you were telling me that Lauren told you about something that happened on the ambulance and some words that were said. Would you tell that to me again? She said when she got on the ambulance that, that's when she woke up and it's the first time, the thing that she remembered after she was pulled out of the water. She woke up in the ambulance and she said, and then they rolled this other stretcher in and it was a little girl. And she said the little girl raised up and looked at her and then reached over and grabbed her hand and squeezed so hard. She said, she nearly squeezed my hand off, but said, I didn't mind. Said, we held hands the whole way to the hospital. <laughs> and the child that she pulled out of the water, she said when she got them up, the child said, you're my angel. And I said, it's Lauren. <laughs> so, yeah. And just for clarification, the child who was in the ambulance with her, was that different than the child? Yes. She yes. raised up. Okay, yes. very good. It was a different child. Tell me how Lauren is doing now. Is she able to sleep? Is she eat? What is she worried about? She's not sleeping well. Uh, she said last night uh, when they got home, I asked her if she wanted me to spend the night. And she said, please do, because I need to sleep and I can't sleep. I'm afraid my mom will need me. 
And so I said, okay, I'll spend the night. And she came in and, and laid down in the living room. We were still talking and she wrapped up in a blanket and laid down on this bean bag chair, I guess, and curled up and she finally went to sleep. So I just slept on the couch so I could watch her. And, and so that's what we'll do. I plan to, I plan to go over and, and spend a lot of time because I don't want those two to be to get to by themselves all the time and at night. So I'll do that. When Pam first found out, um, I, it's unimaginable. It me. is. Um, what happened to Pam? The policeman that came to pick her up stayed with her all night. He didn't leave until I think six o'clock the next morning. And by then some people from here had gotten there to be with her. And uh, she made it pretty good. Uh, I, well, I know she was upset, but there was still hope. And, and uh, I don't know what time they finally told her that they had pulled the last of the, the last four victims had recovered their bodies and, and Lance and Steve were among those last four and they told her and I think she just had a complete breakdown and she, they couldn't get her calmed down or anything and they had to admit her. She went to the emergency room and they ended up giving her a shot and, and she finally, she went to sleep and I think slept for all night and most of the next day. And she's still having a hard time dealing with it, of course, coming home and having to come in last night and, and know that, you know, her son and husband are not coming in. And, uh, but she told me that, she said, we have to be strong because we have to take care of Lauren. And I said, yes, that's, that's the main thing now. We're just gonna have to be strong for her because she's just 14. Uh, How did you find out what had happened? Would you tell me where you were and? I was at their house because they have a dog and so I was staying over there. And during the night, and I don't know what time it was, might have been 1.30 or so, I heard the dog bark and then I heard the doorbell, went to the door and it was our minister and another couple from church who came over to tell me and I knew it was bad because why? Why would they come to the house at that time of night? And they told me, and and uh, we came here, came to my house, and told my husband. And they left and went straight to Branson then to be with her. And uh, and my husband just could not accept it. He just he kept asking me questions. They had told him all of this, but he just couldn't. He couldn't accept it. He just kept saying, who was it? Who was it? Was it? And, but that's how I found out. It was, in, it was probably 1.30 or so in, in the morning. And then it was all day that next day that, you know, it was toward the evening before we found out, you know, that they had recovered them. And, And I couldn't go. Uh, my husband's not in good health, and and he can't travel. And I needed to be here with him. But you know, she had I mean, her family came, her sister and brother, and, and and several people from here, church went to, and so she had some people with her. But but uh, and then my sister and brother came from Oklahoma, and they were here with us, and so that that helps, and so. I know you have a very close family. Yes, very. Tell me how much you're going to miss Steve and Lance. How much? You're going to miss them. I, I just can't. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like. Like I said, my son was here every day, two or three, four times a day. He didn't want my husband to go out and get the mail. He might fall. He came over here to make sure the mail was in. He came over to check the house at night. He would come over and make sure the door was locked because he didn't, you know, it, it was that, it was every day. And I, I don't know how we'll deal with that. I just, I just, 
I just don't know. Is there anything else you would like to tell us? Just tell your family every day you love them. Don't, don't put off. Because you never know. You never know. When, I never thought this would happen to us. And, and, uh, so every day, give your kids a hug. Tell them you love them. Just. And I hope that I'm going to be a better grandmother, a better wife, and a better mother-in-law because of this. Because I want us to. I just. And I just want to uh, live so that someday we'll all be together again, and I know that. I know that we will. And my mother passed away a month ago, and my little granddaughter said, told her mother, she said, Mom, she said, Grandma Beck was waiting for them. She's taking care of them now. And so that's what I believe, and that's what I want. I want to be there with them someday. And I, Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sure they would be so proud. You just want to wake up and let this, this is a nightmare. It's not, it didn't really happen. <laughs> but my family's coming, all of them. I have cousins, I have nieces, nephews. They're coming to be with me. I have one cousin who was just a, he's not in good health at all. And I said, you don't have to come. I know you love me and I know you'd like to be here, but I know you're not able. And he said, I do love you and I'm going to be there. So, you know, that's the kind of family I have and, and they're going to be here to support me. And so we're going to make it. <laughs>